All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Um, thank you to um, Keith for joining us today. I'm so excited to have you and I'm so excited to hear more about your painting practice. Um, a few things um, just to note before we get started. Um, my name is Michelle Raymond and I am the director of uh, Clark Art Talks and Archer Gallery here at Clark College. Um, and it's such a joy to host these events and have you all here. Hi students. Hello, all of my students that are here. Thank you for coming. Um, and um, just a few things about Archer Gallery and some of our upcoming events. Um, so right now, currently we have a stunning show up in our physical gallery space in Vancouver, Washington. Um, the show is titled Of a Setting Sun, and it is a two-person show by Anna Fiddler and Katie Stone. Um, if you're in the area, we are taking uh, viewing appointments, so you can get in touch with me um, through email mraymond at clark.edu to schedule one of those and stop by and check out this incredible show that we have up. Um, it will be up through Friday, March 11th. Um, so just a few more weeks to see that. Um, and then on Friday, March 11th from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, on campus, we are going to be having a, a closing reception for the show. Um, you do have to RSVP because we have uh, limited capacity due to COVID pro protocols on campus. Um, and you can do that through our website, archergallery.space. There's like a button that says RSVP to of a setting sun closing reception and um, you'll have to um, get a, um, a free ticket. It's like a event bright ticket, um, but it's free and everything. And, uh, but you'll just have to have one of those. All right, um, so beyond the Archer Gallery programming, uh, we also have one more Clark Art Talk after Keith Jackson's today. Um, and that is going to be uh, for our winter term. And that is going to be next Friday at noon. We're going to have Terry Powers joining us from Utah. Um, Terry Power Powers is also a painter, a realist painter, um, somebody I've been kind of keeping tabs on for the last few years. Um, he uh, went to RISD for his BFA and to Stanford for mm. his MFA. Um, and so he paints a lot of um, works around his daily life, not dissimilar, I feel like in some ways to Keith's practice where he's kind of really pulling from his family and um, his you know, kind of own experience. So that should be really great. Um, Zoom links are again, also available um, on our website. So archergallery.space. Um, and remember also that all of these talks are recorded. So um, if you miss one or if you uh, want to share it with anybody, um, all of our talks are on our Archer Gallery YouTube channel and they're also on our website, archergallery.space. All right, um, so moving on to some thank yous. Um, thank you, of course, to our fantastic students for being here today. Thank you, of course, to Keith for being here. Uh, thank you to our incredible art department at Clark College. Thank you to Lisa for being here today. Um, you show up to almost all of these events and I just love seeing your face. <laughs> um, I see Sensini, I think, here too, which is awesome. Thanks for coming, Sensini. Um, and um, to ASCC, um, which is our student government for um, supporting us monetarily and otherwise, and for all the funding, we wouldn't be here without you. Um, all right, and so with that, I would like to um, give a little introduction to Keith Jackson, who I got to spend some time with uh, yesterday, which was just lovely and awesome, great conversation. Um, I first saw Keith's incredible paintings on Instagram of all places. Um, and, you know, thinking about Instagram 10 years ago, I would not have thought that this was a space for learning about contemporary art, but it has become such a great resource for this. I've been following Keith's gallery, uh, Steven Zevitas, for many years as the publisher of the well-known magazine, New American Paintings. Zevitas has a knack for representing work that I'm particularly drawn to, and Keith Jackson's work is no exception. Through his gorgeous use of color and composition, Keith's autobiographical paintings are full of his memories from childhood. They glow with an affection for family and youthful understandings of the world. I got to chat with Keith a bit yesterday, and this is no coincidence. Keith intentionally works through the ups and downs of his childhood growing up in rural Missouri in a concerted effort to understand his lineage and connection to the people in his life and his familial history. The work we remember, uh, I'm sorry, the way we remember things often differs from how others remember that same time and space. But Keith's paintings are about finding clarity through the fog of memory 
and grappling with the distance between our youthful selves and the present moment while keeping personal identity in the forefront. Keith Jackson is a mostly self-taught painter living and working in Kenosha, Wisconsin, with a recent celebrated solo show at Stephen Zevitas Gallery in Boston, Massachusetts. There has been a great demand for Keith's paintings across the country and the world. Look for his works in solo shows in New York City coming soon. I can't wait. I want to see them so badly in person. <laughs> his art practice is one to watch, and he deserves every bit of that recognition. Please help me welcome fantastic painter Keith Jackson. Wow, uh, well, thank you, Michelle. That was a uh, lovely introduction for me. And uh, just thank, thank you everyone for being here. And uh, thank you, Michelle, for setting all of this up. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, um, thank you So for being here. Um, with that said, um, let's see, I say it after. So I think I'm gonna just pull up my slides and uh, we'll get started and uh, just talk about uh, a little bit um, about how I got started again. <laughs> so, uh, so just give me a second and I'm gonna bring up my slides. Okay, so are we good, everyone? Yeah, we can okay. see you, yeah. Okay, nice. Um, so my first slide here, um, I'm just gonna start off with my, my parents, um, two amazing, wonderful people that- um, Hi, Keith, can you um, hit slideshow at the top right? So it'll oh, I'm, make it a little bit bigger for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep forgetting to do that, thank you. <laughs> I know, thank you. Yes, thank you. Perfect, um, thank you. So two amazing people that grew up in the Boot Hill, um, and that's where I, that's obviously, that's where I grew up and that's where I base all of my work off of. Um, two amazing people, um, that's why I'm here today. Um, and these were hardworking people that instilled in me and my siblings uh, what hard work could do for, for anyone. Um, my mom was from Arkansas. My dad, he was actually born um, in the Boot Hill part. And uh, in a, the house that they're standing in front of, that house was built by my hands, my dad's hands. And you're talking about someone with um, a limited education. They were both the oldest in their families. They both had to drop out of school and work and uh, take care of their families, to help take care of their families. So, um, and you're talk talking about someone building this home that uh, we were very proud of. It uh, was finished in 1979. And you're talking about no schematics, no blueprints or anything like that. And, um, and so seeing things the way I see them, my dad, um, I don't look at him so much as an artist, but it, like I do my mom, my mom used to sew and do quilts and she never used any patterns or she would make her own patterns in this and that. But actually my dad was had a vision too, because I mean, if you can build a house without any blueprints or schematics or anything like that, that's just uh, amazing in itself. Um, so um, I got started again. Um, boy, back in, let's, let's just go back, back in uh, 2019, my son had a show. I'll just talk about this a little bit. My son actually, uh, not a show, but he had some work on display at the um, art fair in Miami. And Steven Zavitas, uh, of course, was there and we were having dinner. And uh, so we're talking and he says, uh, so how about you? Do you paint? And um, I says, no because I haven't done this in so long and I never really identified myself as a professional artist. 
So my son says, oh, yes, he does. So he pulls out uh, this little painting, which I'll show you later. And uh, so just like that, Stephen looks at the painting and says, do you want to do a show next year? And I'm thinking, I'm like, no, not really. Let me think about it, you know. And uh, I just didn't want to, uh, um, I, I don't know, come to terms with, you know, hey, I haven't done this in so long. And, you know, I don't know. And so I had to think about it. But uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, this slide here, I grew up in outside of a little town or a village uh, called Essex, Missouri. Um, 400 and something people, 472 people, I believe. Uh, not very many people. Uh, this is the city hall. You can see uh, it's not that big of a place. Um, and uh, so here are the demographics of uh, Essex, Missouri. You can see that 98%, a little above 98% white, and that leaves like a little bit more than 2% black. <laughs> so pretty much there's just white and black. Just to give you an idea of where we grew up, out of 472 uh, people living um, in that area, and uh, it was uh, it was a fun place for us. I mean, we didn't really have to deal with a whole lot of. Um, I mean, you, you see the demographics, so we didn't really have to deal with a whole lot of racism. We well, not that I could see. Maybe my parents did, but they were very good at uh, protecting us from that type of thing. So um, you know, everything's. We had fun, all those memories that, uh, that I paint. Um, so there's, there's really not a whole, a whole lot of bad memories, more good than bad. Um, here in the next slide, here we have a, uh, a sign here that says uh, we're talking about you know, Parma, Malden. So in this area, you have all these little towns and they're all about the same size, maybe four or 500 people um, living in the, you know, in these little towns. But as you can see, I don't know if anyone's familiar with Highway 61, it goes a long way. And, uh, you know, talking about, uh, you know, bringing Highway 61 up, I'll go to the next slide. Um, and I wanna talk just a little bit about uh, the 1939 um, Boot Hill protest from the um, sharecroppers. So in 1938, the government decided to pay the farmers in this area not to grow a third of their crop because everyone's paying the same things, it's driving their price down. And so the government came up with a plan. Um, to pay these farmers not to grow a third of their crops, but they had to give half of this to uh, the sharecroppers. And so when it came time for uh, people to get paid, the sharecroppers to get paid, they didn't get paid. And a lot of these people, uh, there were thousands of people that uh, didn't get paid and got, actually got kicked out of their homes um, because of this. And so the sharecroppers got together. This, can you imagine working for months and months? I can't imagine working for months and months. And, you know, we get paid, most of us get paid at least twice a month, right? And so I can imagine um, working, you know, for eight months seven months and not getting paid when it's time to get paid. So um, so the sharecroppers got together, 95% black. There were some white sharecroppers in this protest also. But as you can see in the photo that they, they, uh, they were camped out there, that's where they lived. They didn't have anywhere to, uh, to live. So uh, they found the busiest highway, Highway 61, to get attention and, uh, and that's long story short, the government had to do 
something. Um, and so they built, they actually built housing for these people. And for all of these people, it was the first time that they had um, running water and, uh, and, and electricity. And so um, my mom at the time was 10 years old. And so I can remember my mom talking about um, losing their farm when she was 10 years old. And so um, this, my mom was part of that, um, losing their homes. And um, so she would always talk about, yeah, we had our farm and when I was a little girl and we lost our farm, but as a kid, you don't know what's going on. You don't know why you lost your home. And uh, being a, a tenant farmer, you know, you don't own anything. You don't own the land. You don't own anything except the clothes on your back. Um, so that's, that's what happened. Uh, I talked to one of my aunts a few years ago. And uh, um, she said, yeah, she said, when we grew up, she said there was some of the houses that we lived in. She said, you can look up and see the sky. So can you, you know, can, I can imagine I, I can't imagine, um, you know, what they had to go through. So um, anyway, um, this slide here, um, back in 2019, we were visiting uh, the area and my brother, and that's my brother that's with me. So let's go for a drive, see where the old house used to be and just take a look around. And I haven't been in that area before. Ever. So I'm thinking that when we get there, there's going to be um, black top and, you know, all the roads are going to be paved and this and that because it's been so long since we've been there. I was surprised when we got there, everything is exactly the same after 40 some years, gravel roads, dirt roads. And um, I was just a little surprised. So boy, it's, 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 it's the same, you know. Um, and so in the, in the foreground, there's a, you see a farm in that. Um, that's the farm I had to walk past quite a bit uh, to get to my friend's house. And uh, actually, um, that's going to bring us to the next uh, Oh, well, not, not that painting, um, but, you know, I moved some stuff around, sorry. Um, we'll just go back to that. I'll talk about this a little bit. Um, I had to go to my friend's house and there was a dog that would always come out and um, I was afraid of the dog. It always come to the edge of the road and bark and growl. And, and uh, so a lot of times I would cut through the field and go all the way around to get to my friend's house. And sometimes you could see the farmer, he would be, be in the barn or something. And uh, I mean, you know, no one kept their dogs chained up or they had, a, you know, like a fence around the house or anything like that. Um, in that down there, no one had, you know, dogs just ran around, you know, and uh, but he would never call the dog back. Um, so, but, uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, in this painting here, um, I was talking about, uh, having dinner with Stephen, uh, Zavitas, the, the gallery in Boston where I had my first show. And, um, so, you know, he's asking if I paint and my son said, oh yes, he does. My son, this is the painting that my son pulls up on his phone. So it's a, it's a small painting that's um, like four by six inches. And so um, my son shows in this painting and he says, do you want to do a show? And like I said before, I had to think about it. I really didn't, really didn't want to do it at this point in my life. I was just, just like, oh, I'll think about it, you know. And uh, so, so this is the painting that uh, actually started um, they got me started back, um, and got me my first show, which is amazing, which just doesn't, uh, 
I was told that just doesn't happen to anyone. <laughs> so um, I'm very grateful for, uh, for, for that. And my son just saying, hey, you gotta, you gotta do this. You gotta do this. My son is always on me. You gotta do this. And I kept saying, no, 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 no. It, it, it's too late for me. You do your thing. Um, so, but hey, I guess if, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And uh, that was a plan that was made for me. I didn't make it myself. It was, I don't know, someone made it for me, you know, uh, later on at this stage in my life. Um, now, this uh, slide here, this is, uh, this is in Miami back in December um, at the uh, Untitled Art Fair. Um, I just wanted to show, um, you know, a little bit, um, you know, this is, this is where it began. I came to this building with my son and to look at art and so much talent in this building, so much art, so much talent. And it's just like, you know, just like, oh my, you know, you're looking around just like, I feel like. I feel like this, you know, because there's so many great artists and um, it's just like, wow. Um, so I'm back in the building where it all started. And, um, and this is the gallery owner that I'm talking to, uh, Stephen. And uh, he's like, yeah, it's, isn't, it, isn't it amazing? Like, this is where it all started. And just to come full circle is, is, uh, is amazing. So lots of fun, lots of fun. I, I, I can't say um, enough. Um, now this um, slide here is uh, actually my first show. Um, this is uh, Steven Zavita's gallery in Boston. Um, it was a great um, reception. Um, actually, my first show was a sellout show. And the picture that's in the, that, that's in the backdrop here, I mean, you can see the paintings that are, that are on the walls. Um, and he told me, he said, you know, he says, particularly uh, the painting that you guys are, that you see in the background, um, it's called Saturday Morning. And uh, he said, you know, I could have sold that painting over a hundred times. And I'm like, okay. I mean, I'm just doing my thing. I'm like, okay, you know, it's it's it's, it's no big deal, you know. And uh, you know, all of these paintings went to good homes. Um, and so, and let's face it, I mean, you're an artist. I mean, we're all doing it because we love to do it. Um, it's kind of like going fishing. You know, you say, oh, you know, you go out and you don't catch any fish, and you see someone else, and they say. You know, oh, I didn't, you know, I didn't catch anything, but it's, um, it's just nice to be out here, you know, and after a while you go, <laughs> you know, it's like, I do want to catch a fish. So, I mean, being an artist, yes, we love doing what we do, but we want people to want our work, you know, we, we want to sell some stuff, you know, sometimes too. And so it's, it's a good feeling, you know, it's just amazing that at this point in my life, my very first show, and it's a sellout show, my very, very first show. So uh, that I thought that was just amazing within itself. Um, so very grateful for that. Um, so um, the painting again, Saturday morning, um, I talked about it already, you guys have seen it. Um, but just a little, a little story of, about this painting, um, it went to a, well, I don't, I don't know if I can name the collector, but um, it went to a, a nice home in Los Angeles. Um, a retired basketball player saw it on Instagram before my show, I posted it on Instagram and um, it was Michael Jordan. Um, <laughs> um, but um, he says, is it for sale? I said, um, yes, but not right now. I'm, I'm getting ready for a show. And he, I said, well, he says, well, I want that painting. And he, he uh, messaged me like a few times. He says, dude, I need that painting. He's like, that's me watching Transformers 
before the school bus. And I'm like, okay, well, you have to wait. I'll, I'll tell the gallery to, you know, to connect with you and this and that. He must have been a real busy gallery, connected with him initially. He was real busy. Um, he never did uh, put anything down on it. And then he just like disappeared. And um, so uh, the gallery owner calls me and says, hey, I have heard from this guy. I said, well, no, you do, you know, you do what you do. You sell it to someone else, whatever. You do what you do. That's why I have you. And uh, so two days after the show opened, I get a call from the gallery owner. He says, guess who I heard from? And he says, yeah, this guy that, you know, this basketball player. And he says, oh, I'm really sorry. And he says, dude, I sold a painting to someone else. And he says, yeah, I understand. He says, well, who did you sell it to? Tell them I'll give them more money for it than what they paid for it. And he says, I can't do that, you know? And uh, so he didn't get the paint, but um, my, my, when, when I had work to go to Miami, he was the first one that the gallery owner called and says, hey, I want to give you first shot at um, these new paintings from Keith. And he says, oh, yeah, I'll take this one. I'll take this one. I'll take this one. He said, no, 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 you can just, you can just get one. Not, you know, not, not all of it. And so, um, so yeah, a little bit about this, this painting. Um, now, I don't know if you guys uh, heard of Superfly. All my paintings are like, go back in time. You know, 1970s. Um, so 1970s was a Superfly movie. Um, I just in this painting, I just updated it and uh, brought it to uh, modern times. And um, so, you know, again, thinking about uh, when I was a kid uh, watching the Superfly movies, there weren't many um, African American people. You know on TV or on the big screen or whatnot. So just like, oh, you know, just, you know, the few movies that were playing, um, you know, you could remember those movies. And I said, oh, okay, you know, I remember that movie. And, you know, they had posters and all of that. So I wanted to, uh, you know, uh, do something like that. And then, and, and, and actually, as you guys can see, you know, they're standing in the middle of Times Square. You see that um, Father Duffy, statue right there. Um, but yeah, I, I had fun um, with this painting. Um, and this is just another painting from my, uh, from my show. Um, and, and by the way, all of the paintings that you guys are looking at are uh, oil on canvas and uh, oil on panel. Uh, so in this painting here, um, I don't know if you guys ever heard uh, Cardinal comes to visit you. It's um, a loved one that's visiting you, uh, a lost loved one that's visiting you. Uh, when, a, when you see a cardinal that close to you, um, so in this painting, I was I was kind of thinking about my grandma and you know, stuff like that, and uh, just be me being a uh, a little guy. I'm still a little guy, but uh, when I was a littler guy, <laughs> um, just. I was too young to pick cotton, but I can remember just like being in the cotton fields a few times uh, just because I, I had to go. No one was available to stay home with me. And um, so, you know, with the cardinal and all of that and just uh, that I thought about, my, about myself um, placing a kid in the background. That, that's not necessarily me, but um, just just the thought and uh, with the cardinal, uh, you know. In the, in the painting. Um, again, um, oil on, um, this is oil on panel, actually. And um, this is what, 22 by 24 inch painting. Um, just, hey, just, it, it, it's food. Some of the things that we ate as a child, uh, old star potato chips and honey bread. I can remember those two things. And um, so that's uh, something that I can remember. You know, it's just doing these paintings just takes me back to um, when I was a kid. And uh, I can say, like I said, I had more 
fond memories um, than 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 bad memories. So it, it, it's all good. We we, uh, we we had fun as kids. Um, so now this is this painting here. This is uh, oil on canvas. Um, 24 by 28. Uh, this is a painting that went down I'll to Pac-Man. Um, Miami for the uh, Untitled Art Fair. And this is this is uh, this painting went to a basketball player. He, he had first dibs on all paintings, and I love this painting. Um, Pac-Man. Who doesn't love Pac-Man, right? Or who didn't play Pac-Man as as a child? And uh, so, you know, all, all these memories that I had in my head, oh yeah, I can remember going to the arcades when I was, you know, 15, 16 and, you know, and, and playing Pac-Man and just, and just having fun. Um, so this is uh, a piece that, um, that went to the art fair in Miami. I had uh, several pieces to go. I believe in total it was five pieces. And, uh, and all of those were actually gone um, I believe maybe like the second day um, that that they all had sold, and so um, so that 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 that's good. Um, this painting, <laughs> I thought about my dad. My dad growing up in the Blue Hill Park, and uh, he used to say that, uh, "Hey." When I was a kid, we would see those things because, I mean, you know, there's different meanings um, behind um, the lawn jockey. And uh, people say that they were uh, like a marker for the Underground Railroad. If you see that out, uh, it's a safe place to go. And, but I don't know. Some people find them, uh, Black people find them offensive. Um, later on, I guess you can use any, I guess anyone can use anything to make a racial statement or whatnot, you know, I mean, if you, if you look at them, you know, they're, they're black and they have big red lips or whatever. But anyway, my dad said when he was a kid that he used to, uh, <laughs> that's what he used to do to him and, and run him and his friend, they would do that and run, you know. And so when I made this painting, uh, I was thinking about my dad. That's not necessarily my dad. But I was thinking about him um, in this painting. And this is oil on canvas, uh, 20, 22, I believe it's, no, 24 by 28. And this is a piece that also went down to uh, Miami. Um, Sock and Robots, who uh, I'm sure most of us remember Rock and Sock and Robots. Uh, boy, the commercial and, and and just you know, as a child, I, I have to have that I'm a robot. Um, again, just childhood memories. Um, twenty-two by twenty-four oil on canvas. That's something that went down to Miami also. Um, and again, I just want to show you, you know, the, how I, you know, just getting started back. These are this is like the first year, like. You know, it took me a year to get ready for my sh my solo show in Boston. Um, but all of these paintings were made in um, within a year. So uh, it was a busy guy and lots of lots of thoughts turning around in my head. Um, now, you guys remember seeing that farm picture uh, with my brother and I standing on the on the gravel road and the farm in the foreground. Now, this is this is me in the painting and my cousin. Um, and this is um, titled Eddie James. So Eddie James is a cousin of mine. He's a big, strong guy. And so um, we would have to walk past that house. We we're going somewhere. We would have to walk past the house with the dog. On that particular day, the dog comes out and wants to attack us. And so, you know, I'm, I'm gone. I'm, 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 I'm scared. I'm gone. I'm running. And so Eddie James 
starts to bite the dog. And uh, so in this painting, this is actually uh, true events that happened in the painting. This is uh, 22 by 28 on, uh, on wood panel. And this is oil also. All the paintings are oil. Um, on the next painting, Eddie James versus uh, German Shepherd is the title of this painting. And you can see, if you saw the painting before, right, the Superman doll. Now the Superman doll is on the ground and I am out of there because, um, and so um, he takes care of the dog. And so you can imagine uh, not a happy uh, farmer after, I mean, he, he tried to kill the dog, but, but um, so not a, not a happy farmer. Um, and so, but, you know, in that area, in that time frame, you know, back in, in the seventies or whatever, and being in that 98% uh, percent white community and, you know, the less than 3% African-American, there was kind of a, you know, uh, it, it, it just wasn't good for everyone. I'll put it, I'll put it that way. Um, so that's that painting. And just, and just a little more, I'll just talk a little more about these other paintings. Um, this is a 22 by 28 uh, oil on canvas. Um, and this is a funny story. When we were kids, we would always play outside, no matter how hot, no matter how cold, we would always be outside. That's where we were all the time, outside. And so um, my brother, it's a couple of years older than me. He decides, okay, so this is summertime. So it's like 99 degrees outside. He takes milk and he takes grape juice and he mixes it together. And he says, well, okay, there's chocolate milk, there's strawberry milk. Why not grape milk? Okay. And uh, I says, okay. He says, you want some? And I says, I just passed on it. And uh, <laughs> we're running around outside playing. And um, <laughs> an hour later, well, as you can see in the painting, uh, that uh, great milk, so to speak, didn't really stay down. <laughs> it was, I guess, I guess it, it, was, it was, even when he mixed it together, it didn't even mix good. It was, and it was kind of like bubbling. I just said, no, I'll, I'll, I'll pass on, on the great milk. And so uh, that, uh, <laughs> That that's something that we laugh about today from time to time. And, and of course, I mean, we had, um, you know, being on a farm, we had chickens and stuff like that all running around and chickens eat anything. So uh, <laughs> they, they eat anything. So um, that's the story uh, about this painting. And then again, that's uh, Kathy that she's done now. Um, I think she had to go to work. But anyway, um, like I said, we were always outside winter, summer. Uh, that's me sitting on the sled. And, uh, and that's my brother that, uh, with the great milk. But yeah, uh, we were always outside playing. And if you notice in just about all of my paintings, um, they're, they are outdoors, you know, they're outdoor scenes. And so um, just, yeah, just, just a lot of fun um, being outside. Um, now that my that's two of my brothers uh, of the, uh, excluding, excluding myself, there's uh, four other brothers. But again, this is pictures taken after church. That's me, um, the shortest one. I think I'm still, no, no, I don't think, I, I'm still the shortest one. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so this picture was taken after church. And um, like I said, hey, after church, after school, we were always outside, just ready to go and play. Um, so um, now this, this is a painting, uh, oil on, uh, on canvas. Um, that's my cousin again, Eddie James, uh, big, strong guy. Um, and uh, my dad cutting wood. And so, and so many, I mean, you, you see the cot, there's cotton fields in the background and, and, and these little, these, these houses are, um, I don't want to, well, they're old houses. I don't want to say, well, a lot of them were shacks, you know, um, but, but 
you can see the house in the background in the in the red and white pickup truck that was my dad's favorite color he, you know he, he got rid of that truck and then he got another red and white Chevy pickup truck he would take a chair and put in the back of the, a big lawn chair and put in the back of the truck and that's where we would ride I mean our my brothers and I would ride in the back of the truck wherever we went we would ride in the back of that truck and uh, so we often went to go visit my cousins into this onto this slide here and um so when we would leave my cousin's house they run and jump on their bicycles and uh ride behind the pickup truck and uh i would be riding in back of the pickup truck and they would be riding behind the pickup truck the whole way down the road riding wheelies and of course, uh, I could never, uh, I said, when I get home, I'm going to get on my bike and try to do that. But I could never even ride a wheelie um, two feet. So, but anyway, um, so again, this is, this is oil on panel. And this is from my first uh, solo show also. Um, again, um, oil on canvas, uh, just, you know, the older home in the background in the chickens in the background um in in the corn fields i mean th those were things that there was always a corn field a cotton field a tobacco field and a soybean field no matter where you looked um in those areas so um just lots of fun um running through the fields as a kid um and you know i am so grateful um to, uh, to have had my first show and not to have only just had a first uh, show, solo show, but to have the, the show to sell out and then to be asked to, um, hey, can you get me some work for Miami? And even I, I, I talked to the gallery owner just a couple of weeks ago and he says, hey, you know, people are asking, um, hey, when are you going to get more work from Keith Jackson, you know? And so um, it's not anything that I planned. It's something that just happened to me. I've always, uh, uh, my parents taught us, you know, hey, you work hard. It comes back full circle. You work hard and you're honest, you know, and uh, people will like you just for that, you know? regardless and so we don't we don't as as artists like i said it's it's a fun thing and, and it makes me feel good inside it's not necessarily about making a lot of money but like i said compared to with the whole fishing thing i mean yeah you want you know you do want to sell some of your work sometimes mm -hmm. um and so um so yeah that that's my story um you know and um i don't know if anyone has any questions um that they want to ask um yeah thanks so much oh, yeah. Keith um there are um a few questions I think in the chat and if anybody has any more questions that you want to plop into the chat you're welcome to um but let's start with um one from Joel and he says does uh Keith prefer to access these memories through old photos his own memory his family's or all of the above and how does that impact the work um, I, I paint by um, memory. My, my paintings are inspired from memory. Um, of course, of course, we do need um, references when we do paint. Uh, well, I do. Um, I don't know about anyone else, but uh, references when we do paint. And um, so, just just those. Uh, those things because there's so many um, fun or funny stories um, that are that we that we all have. I mean, if we had a, a good childhood when we were kids, and uh, so that 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 inspires me, um, and it makes me feel good. It, it takes me back because the memories that we um, that that I do have, um, just growing up um you know in that that part of my life so so um it's a little bit of both working with photos and working with uh with memory 
Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Um, and then, oh, go ahead, Joel. Did you want to say something? No, I just say that's cool. And yeah, the products you use, like as a kid from the eighties, like everyone had like, you know, like Atari or they had like that, those robots or even this worm here. So getting them right is kind of cool. Cause then it like, you see that image and immediately it brings something up, you know, for me too. So thank you for doing that and paying attention to that in the work. It's, it's a cool way to bring people together. Yeah. You, you, you're, you're very welcome. And that's exactly what, um, that's exactly what I, I, I try to do in my, in my work. That's part of it. I mean, not only with me, I mean, you know, growing up in the seventies and the eighties, I mean, I think most of us say, Oh man, I remember when I was a kid, and, you know, I had this toy or that toy because you were a kid and you, you played and you, well, I guess you should have had fun, you know, and, um, and so, yeah, those memories, uh, and, 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 and I'll just say something real quick about the uh, Saturday morning painting uh, with the Transformers and, and all of that. With, with, uh, that. So, that's, so that's me, my brother and my sister watching Transformers and my youngest son, had to do a presentation for his uh, black literature class. He's, he's, he's a freshman in college. And so he used that painting. His professor is from Mississippi and he looked at the painting and says, oh man, he says, that just reminds me, he said those floors and everything in that reminds me of when I was a kid. And he says, I can smell, okay, as so, so as, as an African-American, okay, it's a cultural thing, what, what I'm getting ready to say, collard greens and cornbread, you know, that's what a lot of Southern people ate or still eat, you know, stuff like that. He says, I can, just looking at that painting, he says, I can smell it right now. <laughs> so um, I said, well, I guess he's probably not going to have spaghetti or lasagna tonight. Like he's <laughs> probably going to have collard greens or something. So yeah, so yeah, thank you, uh, Joel. Awesome. Um, another question um, from Mitch, um, have you ever been into abstract art um, to tell these stories of memory? Um, early on, um, I did a little bit of uh, abstract art, but it really wasn't, I just didn't enjoy it as much as doing figurative paintings, um, just because I guess my personality is um, okay. What you see is what you get. This this is me. Okay, so in it's in my work, it kind of comes through the same. Um, it's like you don't have to figure it out. It's it's uh, what you see is what you get. Um, and so I just have more fun um, doing figurative. Uh, paintings instead of abstract. Um, not to say that I won't go back to it, uh, but with me just getting started back um, painting right now, that's what I'm, that's what I'm like really into. And um, just to say that getting back into painting, that has really sparked an interest um, for me as a person, just to find out more about um, my family's history. I mean, I've been on Ancestry and stuff like that and just listening and learning more about um, just not necessarily my family, but just the um, um, African-American community throughout history, so to speak. So, but that's what painting has uh, just, just that just painting has started that whole like a snowball effect for me, but not to say I won't, you know, ever go back in the abstract painting. I think about it. But I just right now I'm into this. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Rebecca asks, do you use multiple types of perspectives to show different interpretations of an event? Um, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, sometimes I almost tell a story. I mean, you saw the Eddie James paintings. Um, one was there were there were like two different views like uh we had the beginning and then we had the end and you know there was one was positioned uh, one way and the other one a different way and uh and I'm working my new painting my new works um are are bigger paintings 
And um, I do like to tell a story in my paintings and my work. And, um, but you'll see, yes, um, as far as uh, different, um, different views of, of, of work, of works, I should say, I, I, I do uh, like doing that. So thank you. Yeah, I think that would be so interesting because we had chatted yesterday about um, how the same story, you know, as you go from person to person in your family, how people kind of remember things differently and how that could be such a interesting angle, you know, to kind of like depict, you know, different versions of the same thing. Right, 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 right. And we all see, we all have our different opinions or we see things differently in a painting. And uh, so, which is, which is, which is wonderful. I mean, that, that's, a, that's in every painting, right? I yeah. mean, you don't, you don't want to limit a painting by saying, oh, this means this, or this means that. You don't want to really limit um, your painting because when we look at things, we all see different things. You, you know, I did the painting, but you see something that, okay, I made this, but it's like, I, I don't see that anymore, that part of it. And someone might point out something and say, well, okay, why is this here? Why is this over here or over there? You know, right. so, yeah, yeah. why is it composed this way? I love the Pac-Man one because it totally brings up, um, you know, me as a kid going to the local like corner store and pizza shop with my grandmother on sick days when I would like kind of feel a little bit better. And she would take me over for a slice of pizza and there would be video games that I could play. And on like kind of a, a special day when she had a little extra money, she would let me play, play the video games. Um, and so that really kind of brings me back to that moment. And even though obviously you're not depicting me or my family, you know, you're depicting your, sure. yourself or some version of yourself and your family that I can still put myself there and I still feel connected to it in that way. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you for pointing that out. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Gabe asks, uh, could you speak to the power invincibility that comes with coming from strong extended family ties? What do you feel are the differences of folks who are generation generationally connected versus those who are from a more singular nuclear family? Um, boy. Okay, that's a good question. Um, I'll, I'm going to answer this the best the best I can. Um, you and I talked a little bit about um, yesterday about like who you like who we are as a person um and we both are i mean we 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 all all of us we are both our parents you know how they say okay you're you know you have your mom's ways you have your dad's ways or this or that um i think with me throughout just um looking at my grandparents and looking at my parents and where they um, came from and, and just survival. Um, my parents were the oldest siblings, like I said, and, and they had to drop out of school, cloud mule, whatever, and uh, they had limited education. Um, so I think about all those things. And so all those things are instilled in me, like, working hard, you know, if you have to do something and you made a promise, even if you have to stay up all night and all day, well, you're gonna get that done because you said you would do it. Um, so that, so just from generation to generation, I mean, um, my family, people worked, they worked hard and they still didn't have a whole lot, but they still um, had their, their pride about themselves saying, hey, I said I was gonna do it, so I'm gonna do it. And I think um, even if you're, um, you know, like being a, a singular child or, or you know, still, um, I, I think it's still, you find, you still find yourself um, as you get older, you find out who you are um, regardless, whether you like it or not. And, and you just, you, you build on, on that, if that makes any sense. Um, 
you know, once you figure out who you are as a person and, uh, and you embrace that, like I said, I just kept saying, okay, I really don't want to get back into painting, but um, I, I guess I'll try it. And not knowing like all of these things were going to happen, um, you know, people offering me shows in New York and all in this and that, it's just like, okay, I didn't plan on this, but the, the hard work and the honesty and the things that um, my parents and grandparents put in me um, and just being the person who I am, um, there's a lot of good things that came out of it, even though I didn't plan it that way. So um, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's a fantastic response. And I think you know, like you were talking about, we had talked yesterday about just identity and kind of relating to our, our childhoods and our upbringings and whether or not we want to kind of process things in that way or to be connected to that self, you know, whoever we were as kids and, you know, whatever experiences we had, good and bad, that, you know, um, we are going to be that person till the day we die. And that, yes. you know, that connection you know, to that self, you know, and in kind of embracing that self, um, I think at least in your work is just, I think so important and we get to kind of make choices and change things as we go, um, you know, and add on to that. But I think like, you know, accepting ourselves and embracing ourselves for who we are, where we came from, um, I think can be such a, a really empowering thing. And I love seeing that come through in your work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just a few, we have just a minute or so left, um, but just a few comments coming in that everyone's pretty much just saying how much that they love you talking about, you know, your childhood and your family and your experiences um, and how moving that is. And um, I, I totally agree with that. Um, and then looks like Stephanie has maybe our last question or questions. Um, your artwork is so personal and yet so universal. Uh, first, thank you for sharing this part of yourself with all of us as we have enjoyed the fond memories we have as well. This makes your work so, so meaningful. Um, second, how much do your emotions impact your work? How do you process those? I think of the Eddie James series and how difficult those paintings must have been. I think that's a great question. Um, yeah, it, it is a good question. Um, I forgot the term they use. Um, when, when like something bad happens to you and you you block that out of your mind and for so long. And um, so I think for most of my life, that's something that I didn't uh, think about a whole lot, but Eddie James was, a, well, he's an older man now, but um, at the time when I was just a kid, I mean, this was someone that was much bigger than me and not afraid of um, anything. And, and so um, it really doesn't, Eddie James was more like um, a Superman to me. Um, I had the Superman doll in the painting, but Eddie James is the one with the cape, I would say, um, because um, he was really, he was, he was really a, a strong uh, individual person. And, um, and like I said, you know, um, just putting, you know, there was a few bad things that happened, but bad things happen in life, but um, there's more um, good things in life that actually happened to me with my situation. So I don't really focus on the, on the bad things. I focus like in the Eddie James paintings, I focus the more, the more focus isn't on the dog is what I thought of um, Eddie James and who he is as a person. So it wasn't so much the dog, it was more about um, Eddie James. Yeah, he was such an important, I think, figure for you at that time. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. That's awesome. Well, oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you so much, Keith. This is just really incredible. Your paintings, I'm such a fan. Um, I can't wait to see them. You'll have to keep um, us in the loop and just let us know when you're going to be showing next. And if you're on the West Coast or if you're in the Pacific Northwest showing, um, we would absolutely love to see them. So 
Um, but thank you again for sharing um, your stories. Thank you for sharing your paintings with us. Um, thank you students for coming. Thank you to the community for coming um, and for your participation. Um, and remember to come back um, next week uh, for Terry Powers at noon. The Zoom links will be on our website, website archergallery.space. Um, and we look forward to seeing you at all of the Archer Gallery and Clark Art Talks uh, going forward. So thanks everyone for coming and uh, we'll see you hopefully next week. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks, Keith. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>